This is how I managed to fit eight hours of piano practice into just one hour, and how you can too. How many times have you sat at the piano and stared at a piece of music in front of you, then you play it, then you might practice parts of the piece of music, and that's the practice done? Well, as long as you actually are problem solving, then this is an okay method for practice. However, it's not the most efficient use of your time. Before I went to music college to study the piano, this was pretty much how I would practice every time. I'd throw in some scales and exercises too, just for good measure. But for the most part, this was the general method. It was only when I got to music college and friends of mine were learning pieces of music in days, when it would take me months, that I realized I needed to change how I was practicing. So here is what I did. Before I changed anything, I worked out what time I worked best. For me, this was at 6 a.m. because that made me feel super productive and like I'd finished my day before everyone else had got out of bed. It's the same reason why many people go to the gym early in the morning. It makes you feel a sense of achievement before the day has even really started. And that sets you up to stay super productive for the rest of the day. However, I realise that that isn't really practical for most people if you have neighbours or other commitments that stop that being possible. But the key point here is to find a time where you know you can be the most productive and try and stick to it. So once I'd worked out the best time to practice, for me, I then planned my practice and I did this in a very specific way to really optimize and make the most out of my time. There is a link in the description for the practice plan template that I made and used at the time, which you are welcome to download. There is also a link to 22 free piano sight reading exercises from my sight reading exercises book, which is also available to download. Anyway, each day before practicing, I spent no more than 10 minutes planning. The first thing on my plan was 10 minutes of exercises and or scales. This is important for a number of reasons. They help your fingers be able to actually move before trying to play any piece of music. They help you understand the scales that you're going to be using in pieces of music. And if you have a particular technical weakness that you know about, then this is a good way to tackle that problem using exercises. The next thing in my plan was to find the two largest issues in each of the pieces of music I was working on and allocate five or 10 minutes to each problem, obviously depending on how big that problem was. At the time, I was working on full recital programs, so there was quite a few pieces and that meant that the amount of time I spent practicing was more. However, if you are working on two or three pieces, then this will be the two biggest issues in each of those pieces of music. I would then write down three things for each problem. The bar numbers for those problems, what the issue was, and how I thought I was going to fix it. Writing down these three things makes sure that you are not wasting time playing any other parts of the music, and you are concentrating on spending the time where it is most needed. And writing down how I thought I was going to fix it meant that I actually had to think about what methods actually fix certain types of problems. And after a while, I got a good sense of what worked and what didn't, which really shortened the time that I actually needed to practice. The next thing I added to my plan was to learn the next two to four bars, depending on how difficult those bars were. For me, I did this twice per piece, so I would have two sets of two to four bars to learn per piece. But I would recommend just adding one set of two to four bars per piece that you were learning. I also, once again, only gave myself 10 minutes to learn each set of new bars and set a timer. Including new bars in your practice plan, make sure that you are balancing the need to get through the piece of music with the need to make what you already play better. Before I started using this method of practice, I would find myself working on a problem and then 20 minutes had gone and I never got to doing anything else. This way, I was able to schedule a definite amount of time to practice and get everything I needed to do done. If you are getting value from this video so far, be sure to like the video and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thanks. The key to this entire plan is to time yourself when you are practicing and stick to the time limits you set in your plan. If you allocate five minutes to fix a problem, then set a timer and spend only five minutes trying to fix that problem. After planning several practices, you will soon work out how long certain types of problems take you to fix. If a problem doesn't get fixed in the time, then you just add it again to your next plan. Some problems are going to take several visits to the piano, so if it's not something that can be fixed in ten minutes, then it might take two or three sets of ten minutes over two or three different practice sessions. Giving yourself a time limit means that you aren't going to be wasting time trying to fix a problem that needs several practices anyway. Once the practice was done, I also evaluated how I did and gave myself a score based on certain criteria, asking myself, did I achieve what I set out to do? How well did I focus? Was the way that I planned to fix the problem the most efficient? And many other questions like that. 
For me, generating a score at the end of each practice kind of gamified practicing and made me want to beat my previous score. The reason that this plan was able to minimize the amount of time I needed to spend practicing by so much was because there was not a minute of my practice that was spent playing any piece through unnecessarily or not actively fixing something in my playing. The key is to make sure that you don't play a key without a reason. Another way to learn the piano much quicker is by avoiding the mistakes that I made. So if you want to know what I wish I knew before starting the piano, head on through and I will see you there.